this is the Gaumont British News, presenting the truth to the free peoples of the world. These pictures of Britain's Foreign Secretary were taken in the Middle East when he broke his journey at Cairo en route for Moscow. With General Wilson and General Ismay, Mr. Eden discussed military matters, which were to be an important item of discussion in Moscow. Since the report of the conference was issued, it has become clear that Germany doesn't like it. That makes it perfect. Now, from Russia itself, we have the latest available newsreel pictures of the battlefront. From a height which is not named in the dispatches, the cameraman records a mortar and artillery duel, preceding a German counterattack. But here, as elsewhere, the Red Army fire is too deadly. Southwest, an enemy defense line ran through a worker's settlement. Red Army units had dislodged them and many German prisoners were taken. The enemy attempted to recapture their lost defense line with tanks and infantry. But this too became part of the Red Army's victorious non-stop advance. The army in Italy continues to advance, though progress is slow. This is an action after the river crossing, pushing on towards Piscolella, over the canal. A German pocket of resistance at the end of the main road is mopped up by fire from Sherman tanks. Here is a prisoner of war camp that was formerly used to contain Allied prisoners. It has changed ownership. After repairs, it is being used by the Allies to house Germans. It's an open question whether these soldiers reflect in captivity on the misery they have caused throughout the world. But it's a comfort to all decent people to know that Germans responsible for atrocities will, by the Moscow Declaration, be brought to justice at the scene of their crimes. American Army Air Cadets are being trained to take it, as well as to dish it out. This school in the United States has in its curriculum mock attacks with chalk bombs. tough but they're non-killers and they make the real thing seem less serious when the time comes. This plane landing in Delhi brings what we hope and believe is a load of bad news for the Japanese. Admiral Lord Louis Manbatten arriving to take up his new appointment as Supreme Commander-in-Chief Southeast Asia. Greeted by General Auchinleck, CNC India. Air Marshal Sir Richard Pearce and Admiral Sir James Somerville greet Lord Louis for their respective services. This appointment is as good as a declaration that although Hitler has number one priority for annihilation, we mean to prosecute the war in the Far East with the utmost vigor and offensive spirit. This week's news film also brings a dramatic story of action in this theater of our world war. Flying over the Assam Mountains of northern Burma, Rescue planes are searching for 20 men who made a parachute landing from a transport plane bound for China. Radio signals made before the plane was abandoned gave their position and called up this help. Food and medical supplies were dropped by parachute when the maroon men were located.
that these men, who were once the fiercest headhunters of the jungle, had given friendly aid to the strangers who descended on them like mythical gods. They fed and sheltered them until help arrived, and then led them for three weeks back to the frontiers of India. Light relief is provided by the cheery smile and lordly bearing of the flight sergeant who broke his leg and was carried by bearers. Now into battle. P-38 Lightning fighters go roaring out over the southwest Pacific, escort to bombers heading for a Japanese base in New Guinea. First, shooting up enemy planes lined up on the airfield below, and this is some of that destruction you hear about in communique. Away to the east, Newbin and Hansa Bay, Japanese batteries get this lot. B-26 Mitchells in a low-level attack. 